Hey everybody, this is Perch. It's late. I've had a nice dinner, and uh, I'm irritated. I'm, I'm thoroughly irritated, and I shouldn't be because I'm uh, I'm in a, a wonderful place. I'm surrounded by good friends, and uh, had a really really successful day. Um, getting a lot of things done, dealing with a lot of travel, hopping from you know one country to another. I'm I'm in the Mediterranean right now, and you can't be unhappy in the Mediterranean. You, you just can't. Uh, but there's a lot of good work to do. I like to do good work. And I see this article from Polygon where the headline is Dark Horse Promises It's Not Just Straight White Boy Comics Anymore. And I am, um, I, I'm beyond pissed at this headline. And now some of you will say I'm overreacting, and I probably am. But I want to explain why this irritates me so much. And if you're one of those people who, um, I don't know, there's people who always come in and go, oh, look at the... Look at the white guy bitching. I mean, you're, if you're taking that side, please hear me out, okay? Um, if you're on the other side, before you jump in a lot with, you know, Polygon or woke bastards or whatever you, you're going to do, again, hear me out. Because this is really important, and I think it's important for all sides to remember. And I also think it's important for people who love comics to remember. And, it, and whenever I see this kind of stuff, my first instinct is to think the people who are writing this do not love comics. They don't, and maybe they never did. So let me, um, you know, at San Diego Comic-Con, the context in all this is that Dark Horse did a online panel, which is available on YouTube, uh, 30 years of Dark Horse past and present. And Karen Berger, who I, do, who I like quite a bit, Karen Berger is a, a um, key figure who has helped comics immensely. Absolutely. You cannot take that away from her. I think uh, she's done an incredible job. Um, and part of what she said was in, in context, um, you know, it, it's, it's not exactly how it's being reported. Polygon and other websites, because other dishonest, I mean, let, let, you know, let's not use fancy words. Other fucked up shitty websites are happily gleefully uh, regurgitating, vomiting back out this quote because it's, it's good clickbait ads to them. So Karen Berger's exact quote was that she said, I gravitated toward comics that weren't male power fantasies. And I want you to remember that statement because there's nothing wrong with that. She's saying her preference as a reader, as a comic customer, was that she gravitated toward comics that weren't male power fantasies. I was able to look at the medium and ask, why aren't we doing stories about real life? And what Karen Berger did was, uh, you know, largely pushed vertigo. Um, and Berger uh, founded this in 1993. There were a large number of great stories that came out of Vertigo. One of the best parts about Vertigo was that very few people liked everything that Vertigo did. There were some stories people loved, some stories people hated, but it was, it was variety. Um, during a time in the 90s where Marvel was often, you know, you know, basically playing to the lowest common denominator, they had found one thing that worked for them and they were just sucking everything into that. Vertigo was doing a lot of different things. Now, Vertigo has been misrepresented in the past by a bunch of dishonest assholes who like to say, oh, Vertigo was queer comics. That wasn't what Vertigo was. Were there queer lifestyles represented inside Vertigo? Absolutely, there were. But were there a lot of other things too? Yes, experimental storytelling, different art styles, different team dynamics, different all, all kinds of different things. If you boil Vertigo down to, oh, they had queer representation, then you are basically spitting on a lot of creators who really poured their heart into Vertigo, including Grant Morrison, including Rachel Pollock, including Nancy uh, Collins, including all uh, Peter Milligan. I mean, all kinds of people who did amazing work in Vertigo. So, at any rate, uh, the quote goes on, and this whole article and this interview has a lot of things said. So, what's interesting is that, uh, you know, one thing she says, and this is the, the key line. There's like a great line, and then there's kind of a throwaway line. So, Karen Berger says, at this point in time, you have no excuse not to tell your story. Does that sound familiar? Because I've been saying the same thing. It's, I'm not saying it's easy but it's easier than it's ever been. Okay? And this is, uh, sorry, I, I'm, I'm attributing this incorrectly. Uh, this is by Roya Okobe, um, who is, is doing this. And then uh, the creators are discussing kind of the future of stories. 
what comics does better than any other medium is allow authentic people to tell authentic stories. I'm, I'm worked up. I apologize for the, the mistake there. Um, Berger, you know, then there's a lot of comics and Berger says it's not just straight white boy comics anymore, which I, again, I, you know, at much respect and love to Karen Berger. And I, and I mean that honestly and authentically, um, I hate that line. And I hate that line because in the eighties and the nineties, um, I certainly in the nineties, I sold comics to, uh, Mexican, uh, Latino. I sold comics to native Americans, black, white, male, female. Yes. Plenty of queer. I had a, a, a gay employee in my shop who was one of the best employees I've ever had. Loved comics, helped comics, sold lots of comics. Great guy. I, I mean, to this day, if, yeah, you know, uh, lots of time has moved on. If this person wandered into my shop and said, I'm looking for a job, I would hire him on the spot. He was easily the best employee I had. Um, there is comics were for everybody in the 80s and in the 90s. And if you as uh, somebody who's who's working in comics are saying, well, you know, now, now, because this, this line is being told as now uh, our comics, meaning Dark Horse, now we're not just for straight white boys, um, then screw you. Honestly, that's on you. That's not on the customer base. Lots of women, lots of men, lots of all different races and genders and sexualities and everybody else enjoyed comics. It was one of the cool things about comics. And I'm, I'm, I'm fucking tired of having to defend this from people who I'm, I'm tired of having to, to re-clarify this for people because it's, 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 it's a complete and utter lie. The, the cool part about comics was that it was alternative. It was that you did have all different things was that you could go read, you know, a very, you know, by the number superhero power fantasy in young blood. And then you could the same exact month, pick up Sandman, pick up shade, the changing man, pick up Zot, pick up all kinds of different things. Comics have been diverse for a while. And what irritates me are these people who have jumped into comics recently, who now want to frame the past as some kind of bigoted hellhole to be completely and utterly blunt. Comics were far more diverse in the 80s and 90s than they are today. Today, and comics are doing, not counting web comics, which are doing all kinds of things. But if we're talking printed comics, DC was way more diverse in the late 80s and 90s and today. Marvel was more diverse than the late 80s and 90s and today. The independent line were all over the place. Comics actually were punk rock. They weren't just claiming they were punk rock by some jackass who uh, fancies themselves uh, some kind of alternative hipster because they got a sleeve tattoo. Comics have always, always, I'm sorry, that's too big a word, certainly since the 80s and 90s, have been diverse. The comics led the way more than music, more than movies in telling different stories. Comics had gay characters very early on. You've heard the interviews here. You've heard the creators. Why the fuck are people in today's modern society uh, you know, basically uh, blowing off, erasing, and forgetting the awesome accomplishments of people like Bill Lobes, people like uh, uh, Nancy Collins, people, uh, uh, so many, so many people did amazing things diverse, unique things in comics 30 years ago. And now we have a bunch of assholes who have no idea of their history, wanting to walk around and talk about how comics are, are now, now we're making them non white boy comics. Screw you. Screw you. Comics have been this way. They marketed to other, other, you know, they definitely marketed to non straight white boys in the past, they produce content. They produce content that frankly, a lot of creators who have no idea what they're doing are gleefully trying to rip off and copy and ape. You know that, you know, that phrase, you stand on the shoulders of giants. Um, stop peeing on the shoulders you're standing on. Most of the creators today would have no hope of being able to be successful in this industry. If, you know, if, if these, a lot of people hadn't bled for some of these things. I mean, enough, enough. I think that, uh, you know, the, and I, again, I deeply respect Karen Berger. I think 
Karen did a, a huge amount for this industry. I am, I am thoroughly disappointed to see little panels like this and statements thrown out like this because they play to, you know, leeches, to people who are, are trying to rob this industry of its history rather than try and uh, insult what went before comics should be taking the exact opposite approach. We should be proud of the diverse storytelling. We should be proud of all the different kinds of comics that we created. The fact that we did appeal, the fact that black and white and Mexican and Asian and Indian and all these different races could find pieces in comics for themselves. It wasn't a marketing gimmick. We've replaced authenticity with slogans. That is, is bullshit. And I understand that a lot of people who have come into this industry lately, they desperately are trying to find self-meaning in comics, but not at the expense of the people who came before you, not at the expense of people who, who frankly had it much harder than you did. You know, we, we've talked about Phantom Lady, Phantom Lady, a comic from the, what, the 30s, the 40s? Of a creative team of a woman and a black man? And, and we want to talk about how comics are not just straight white boy comics anymore? Fuck you. Thanks for listening.